Yeah, it's your boy. <laughs> Yo, I said, I, 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 you know, I got a love Jones. I got a love Jones. <laughs> and I'ma let you know what it is. Have you ever in your life, girl, been wine and dine? Well, that is what I do if you gave me the time. The mother chicks are done if you decided to be mine. The mother dudes the corny girl, kick them off the line. Flowers, candy, edible arrangements, shows, a movie, some other entertainment. Life for me would be your best decision. Playing hard to get is not an impossible mission. How's it going, Mikey J? I'm good, I'm good. Good yourself? Hey, uh, doing well, man. Nice to see you in the studio. Um, is there anything you want to talk about today? Uh, What's going know, on with you, man? I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. You know, I, I've been, I've been working hard. I've been working hard for the past few years, but I worked even harder last year. In retrospect, to um, instead of just doing my music, I was more so based, focused rather on promoting peace, okay. city, uh, city to city as a New York ambassador. Really? At the time, yeah. Right, tell us a little bit more about that. What's um, going on? It, it, it was actually a, a surprise to me, you know. Here you have a person that that came from the street, but also focused on education. See, I wasn't one of them, I guess, uh, what society called as a thug or whatever they want to call us, who just did thugism, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Now I focus on my my academics. Okay. Because you know my my brothers and cousins always say if you're gonna be in the street, you better have a degree along with it. Okay. Peace. I, I did Patterson, New Jersey, okay, along with Stedman Graham. Uh, much love to Stedman. Great guy. You would not think like this is a guy from the urban community because he's with Oprah. So you know how that goes. <laughs> oh, Stedman Graham, Oprah. He ain't from the hood. That's right. <laughs> Stedman has more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the hood than most hood people. Wow. So much love to Stedman. But um, Patterson, New Jersey, went there twice. Went to Eastside High School with him. And we did International High School. Okay. Um, the tour was his tour, the Live Cinema Tour. Okay. It also had Caroline Jones on it as well. Music and from Caroline's portion, getting the kids involved, the students involved. And, Ste and Stedman gave a great speech each time. And it really intrigued me because here I am like, no matter how many accolades I have, I thought I, I, I never envisioned sitting, eating, and conversing with Stedman Grant. So yeah. that was that was dope. That was like a pinnacle point in my career. Like. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah, man. It was like, it's like you went from eating shell steak to filet mignon, you know. But he's a great guy. So from there, um, I've been to Baltimore. Okay the second day of the riots, and the fourth day of the riots. Wow. And I met a great group of guys down there. You know, media will call them a great um, a, a group of thugs or gangsters. I call them a great group of guys. That's um, Wolf, Magic, Dez. I mean, these are, these are straight up bloods, crips, but they are the ones that were actually holding down the Baltimore Police Department. It was them. Wow. Like, I was there. I seen it for, my, for, my, for myself, my own eyes. Like, you got the military with automatic shotguns, M4s, um, tanks wow. right across the street from us. You know, I, I went down there with a couple of guys that was, but that was part of the organization that I brought in to my ambassadorship. And what's this organization called? Um, at the time, it's, a, it's a Peace December. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the organization that I was with. And um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot because when I was afforded the um, the ambassadorship um, in December of um, I think it was twenty four yeah twenty fourteen, I was only being given an award for um, for the music piece marathon. Okay. You know that I that I did with them, and here I'm on a stage. And they're presenting me with an ambassadorship, and it was great. It was it was a great um, opportunity. Yeah, you know it was a, it was a great run. I, I've done great things. I've I brought more awareness to the organization than it's ever had in its entirety. 
which was actually um, started by um, Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz. Okay. I'm um, familiar with Ruben Diaz. Yeah, great guy. He just afforded me a, 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 a citation of merit. I got that in December of, of 2015. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. I got that around December 9th. So uh, here we have a, a great organization at Ruben Diaz, Michael Bloomberg. It was, it was uh, the Governor Cuomo, um, well, the father to the, to the previous Governor Cuomo, Mario, Mario Cuomo. And um, it, it's a great organization. You know, it just um, needed... It just needed Mikey J's touch, and that's what I gave it. I had a proud run with it, and then I started my organization, Dynamic Artists for Peace. Nice. Number four, Peace. <laughs> uh, love, unity, solidarity, and communication. Love that. Yeah, because with all those, the respect is going to come regardless. So, so uh, just working in the community, um, I you're a working artist. Obviously, you've been doing this for a long time. Is there anywhere you want to take this? More, you know, American citizens. American citizens, whether they're black, white, Latin, you know, Caribbean, it doesn't matter. We're all being affected by what's going on in this country. That's right. You know, the world needs to worry about the world, but still, we need to worry about what's going on in our own backyard right now. Yeah, you know, you, you you can't walk around dumb, deaf, and blind all your life. You can't turn a blind eye to what's in front of you because, you know, people don't become in tune to anything until it happens to them, until it affects them. That's right, and that's not fair. People need to get involved immediately, so when it does affect them, they know how to handle it. They know the injustices that's going on out here. They know the rhetoric that's being thrown at them, but what do they do? They just worry about, and I'm, I'm speaking, I'm going to speak from a mainstream um, artist right now to other mainstream actors and artists. Instead of worrying about your next uh, show or your next film, you need to worry about the next death that may occur. How can we deter that? You know, and I've been working with a, um, a great group of people. I met some great NYPD officers, uh, Jason Wilcox, he's a chief of detectives out of the Bronx. Okay. Uh, Nilda, um, as Inspector Nilda, um, she's out of the 5-2 precinct. And then um, the, uh, Lieutenant Perez out of the, uh, uh, the 48th precinct. Great group of people. Richie Torres, Councilman Richie Torres, Councilman, City Council uh, member Vanessa L. Gibson, Andy King. You know, people that I thought that I would never, ever meet in my life, it's great to align myself with them. Yes. Because now I can bring it from the street perspective. And I always tell people, you know, and instead of trying to combat crime, let's try to find a deterrent. Because if you can find a deterrent, then you will have nothing to combat. Your officers can do the eight hours and go home safely, happily to their families, you know, not worrying about where the next gunshot coming from. My answer to really getting the guns off the street, we need a deterrent for these kids. Because it's not really the adults running around here like they like they cowboys and Indians. It's a lot of the youth. I had I had a couple of youths in my mom neighborhood approach me. And what and one of them said, Hey Mikey J let me hold a gun for you, man, wherever you go. We know who you are. You know, you like 50 and Diddy and everybody else. And I'm like, yo, what did you just say to me? My son is 15. Wow. And they were dead serious. Can I, yo, we want to hold a gun for you. I'm like, how about I get you a job? A friend of mine's on, um, he's the general manager at a certain movie theater. I like my privacy, so I ain't going to tell everybody where I go. <laughs> but, of course. Uh, <laughs> Tracy Morgan goes there too, so I want to <laughs> shout it out. But um, how about I get y'all a job at that movie theater? How old are you? I'm 14. How old are you? I'm 15. How old are you? I'm 16. I'm 16. I'm like, so y'all my son's age, and y'all packing? Wow. So I'm like, it, it, was, it was like a reflection of myself. Because here I am as a grown man looking at, 
how I used to be with my friends. And now I, I, I found upon that, like, wow, that was me. Yeah, but you didn't have you to talk to. Exactly. You know, and I'm that's like, what's missing. What was going on with this? Yeah. Kids asking me, can they protect me? I need to be protecting you. And this is what I'm out here doing. And as much as I try to voice my opinion and voice my concerns, you know, I can get 10 kids off the street, 21 and under. I'm going to call them kids, you know, 20 and under kids, right? They might have a law enforcement encounter. They, could, they don't have to be doing anything. But, you know, you have your good cops and you have your bad cops. That's right. It's uh, good and I, bad in anything, right? That's exactly. Right. I'm not a fan of um, a, a lot of the police policies, yeah. the practices and stuff like that. I like old school cops. <laughs> yeah. I like them old school cops be like, yo, look, this is how you're going to do this because I get off in about an hour. Yeah. You're going to go behind the building, <laughs> do what you got to do, pound it out, and I'm going, we're all going home. You know, those are the old school cops. Because instead of them allowing a the beef to continue, they get you, yo, what, what, what is the beef about in the first place? Because if it's about nonsense, I'm going to knock both of you upside your head. Yeah. They don't have them cops no more. No, you know, and, and the ones that I do know that are like that, that are on the job today, mm -hmm. it'd be hard for them to do that. Of course, so many lawsuits. Exactly. It's a touchy situation exactly. at this point. Exactly, you know. And then and, um, you do have those cops that abuse their power at the same time. Exactly, exactly. And those are the ones who I feel are not righteous. Yes. You know, I don't feel they're righteous. And everybody always wants me to voice my opinions about this police shooting or that police shooting. And I'm like, well, listen, first and foremost, nobody should be shot. That's right. Nobody, sh uh, a, a, a citizen shouldn't be shot. And the cops shouldn't be shot. You've been featured a few times on TV. Yeah. Regarding this, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, do you want to talk about the stations or? Yeah, um, Comedy Central. Okay. Um, uh, CNN did a piece when I was in um, what is it called? Uh, Baltimore. Okay. And News Twelve, News Twelve, Magdalena Dores, um, uh, Raj, and I think Raven Mundy. I had a few of them come out a few times to cover me, as well as um, New York One. Um, Chung, uh, Lori Chung. Okay. Yeah. She covered um, a story and she covered one of the artists that I had um, into Peace December. Okay. And um, that, that was great. And just so many other um, networks and so forth in retrospect to that. It but seems like you're able to break boundaries because, I mean, you're, you're from that neighborhood. Um, I mean, you grew up with these, these same challenges that everyone else yeah. has and yeah. then you've overcome it. But here's the thing though. I'm from the projects where Fat Joe is from. Yeah. Diamond D is from. Showbiz. Wow. Lord Finesse. Um, um, Diamond's legends. partner, Master Rob. You know. <laughs> um, and Coco. Okay. From SWV. That's right. You know, that's my hood. Born and raised, 1020. So if they can overcome it, what is anyone else's excuse? And we didn't, we didn't have those, like Joey, Diamond in them. They didn't, they didn't have the the uh, opportunities that are being afforded to a lot of these kids now. Even though some programs have been taken away from these kids, but still, there were still more opportunities now than we had then. Because you're wow. talking about the 80s and the 90s and, That's right. you know, so look where, look, look, look where Fat Joe is at right now. Yeah, he's doing really well for himself. Exactly. You know, he has um, Team Fat Joe and Mark in America. And, and J.R. Reidinger and, 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 and his wife. And he's doing his music, you know. But I love the fact that they link back up with Remy. That shows you that no matter what a, a two people may go through, through God and Christ, we can all come back together. Of course. It's so family is family, you know. Look at him at 50. Chris Lighty brought them to rest in peace to Chris. Yeah. So... Crazy, the weirdest circumstances can change people. You know, look at Diamond D. A lot of people will not know that this man has two repeated great albums for the past two years. Awesome. I think it's, um, do you, do you feel it's the artists that are um, recognizing that it's more than just where they came from 
what their art is about, but it's about business and growing as an individual and helping others. You know what it is? A lot of the artists, really don't, they, they don't really understand where they come from. Do you really understand your neighborhood? Have you really sat back? Let's say you in um, forest, pride, forest houses in the Bronx, where I'm from. And you sit on the bench. Have you taken time out to look around and be like, where am I really at? That's right. What can I really do for my neighborhood? Because so many artists are worried about that next, that next big break or their next hit record or mixtape, whatever. Maybe if they take the time out to study their surroundings or their, 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 their neighborhood, they would get more in focused more into their music on a social conscious level. All the bang bang shoot them up, die slow music. That's 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 so NWA. That's so, you know, past that. But but even they had a reason. You know. You know. Um, NWA to me was the Black Panthers of hip hop, man. That's right. Straight up. They actually rapped what they seen, what they observed, what they went through. Like the Black Panthers did when they was feeding when they were doing their breakfast, giving kids, uh, it was a children's breakfast they gave I think, every day, every morning. Wow. You know, they tested our people for diseases, a lot of things that they didn't know that the Black Panthers did. Same thing with NWA. They did a lot of good for the neighborhood in California. Same thing out here in New York. You got Public Enemy, Karis One, you know, um, Dana Dane. They all do a lot for the neighborhoods. People just, the media just doesn't care. They don't cover that. They don't cover that. They 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 rather cover Karis One and MC Shan beefing. They rather cover Mikey J and, and and anything negative being said about Mikey J or being done that Mikey J is doing. You know, they don't know that Mikey J is actually a humanitarian, you know, philanthropist, and just so much more. Oh, Mikey J's a rapper. No, I'm not a rapper. First and foremost, I am a lyricist. I'm an MC. I'm a music producer. You know, I'm. Give me my proper credit. For those who don't know what that is, how would you describe that? What's the difference between a rapper, a lyricist? Oh, <laughs> Young Thug is a rapper. Okay. Migos, all that that trap music. That's they're not saying nothing. That's not saying nothing. An the MC. Sound. It's Karis One. Mm. It's Big Daddy Kane. Coogee Rap. Nas. Reasonable Doubt. Hard Knock Life. Jay Z. Okay. You know, that's an MC. Biggie Smalls. MC. Tupac. MC. Mikey J. MC. Rappers, they 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 just. They really don't have much to say. You know, I wrap up my clothes, I, um, <laughs> open the oven, put the pot in. Y'all be bugging. Like, I'm like, yo, what are you saying, dude? Like, yeah. Joel Ortiz. Like, there are so many dope lyricists out here. Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens. New York hip-hop is not dead. You can't dead a culture. No. And can't. that's the difference. See, this is what a lot of artists don't know. They keep saying, oh, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm a hip-hop artist. You're a culture artist? No, you're an MC who represents the culture of hip hop. Mm. And that's what I try to tell artists. They just don't get it. You know, I'm, I'm heavily into hip hop culture to this day. Asians, whether they're Asian Americans or Asians in their homeland, they know more about the hip hop culture than any of these new artists. It's so true. And they're the ones that are actually supporting hip hop culture. Exactly. Europeans, German, Germany, Russia, yes. the Ukraine. Yes. I've seen, I'm like, yo, this is dope. Middle East. That's right. Dope hip hop. That's right. <laughs> dope hip hop. You know, so hip hop, the culture of hip hop is so broad. On a on a on a the spectrum is beyond anything the music industry can even control anymore. It's like it, it's like rock and roll. You can try to dead rock and roll, but guess what? Can't you couldn't do it. <laughs> so, just uh, just 
switching gears for a second, I just wanted to find out, do you have anything coming out that's new? Oh, look yeah, out for anything. Man. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. In November, I dropped my album, Defamation of Character. Wow. And um, Defamation of Character is basically my first personal album. How did you come up with that name? Everybody got something negative to say about Mike DJ. Okay. But here's the thing. Everybody that's doing it, 99.9% .9 of them I've never, I'm going to say 100% of them, I never met. Never broke bread with them. Never ate with them. I don't drink, but I'm going to say I never drank with them. <laughs> you know, they couldn't tell you my favorite ice cream, my favorite color. So you have people out there saying Mikey J this, Mikey J that. But ask them, all right, I, I'm hearing all this negative stuff you're saying about Mikey J. Why don't you tell me something good? Because I'm pretty sure you probably had a relationship with him before the so-called negative stuff. Exactly. And they can't. Yeah. So when somebody spitting negative or spewing negative hate on someone, say, yo, that's cool. What about something positive? You already going to know it's BS. Exactly. So defamation of character addresses as much as I can address on that album. And I love it. From Defame Me, the uh, single Defame Me, If The Shoe Fits is another song. Okay. And um, I got good reviews on the album, man. I, I, did, I did a lot of production, so I'm happy with that. What would you say is your favorite song on the album? Wow, Definition of Character? Whoa. Come on, you gotta have a favorite. You gotta have a baby on this one. I love the Famey. Oh, the Famey is one. But okay. Uh, if the shoe fits is another, but the Famey and um, No Retire. It's a record that I'm going at Young Thug. Okay. Yeah, he's like rappers over thirty should retire. Really? I'm gonna do this bug, and I'm tired of the, the southern rappers taking shots at New York, and I love the South. I love Jeezy, Ti, you know, a few underground rappers that's in the South. So I, when, I, when I'm spitting that, I'm not spitting that them. I'm spitting that Young Thug. I'm spitting that the 2 chains or whoever else that's trying to diss New York. You can't be doing that. And some New Yorkers just sit back and just take it because <laughs> they want to be aligned with them. Nah, man. Somebody got to protect the home front. Uncle Murder got a song called New York. Dope. You know, so then the next album I'm dropping is Last of a Dying Breed. Okay. Another personal album. Wow. Getting at them. I'm five songs in. It drops March 2nd. Okay. The album release party is uh, February 28th. Uh, where is this at? It's going to be at Harlem Nights in Harlem. Okay. And um, I, it's going to be a doors open at 6. It's, it's doors open at 5. It's from 6 to 10. Okay. And uh, I'm going to be rocking the stage. I got a lot of guests coming out. Very cool. A lot cool. of guests. Um, I'm inviting the entire MNN team Thank you family so much. all you guys <laughs> um all the shows can bring their cameras you know it's just gonna be so dope man like and last of a dying breed itself wait my favorite song in there right now is masterpiece masterpiece my favorite one is masterpiece because i've never written a song like that in a dynamic that i did it and it's it's, it's um it's dope uh, what's your process like for creating music sitting in the car just in the I, I gotta be in the car, man. Like, <laughs> are you listening to music? Or? Yeah, 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 listen to my instrumentals and stuff okay. like that, and and that's my creative juices get to flowing. That's okay. how they get flowing. And when I wrote masterpiece, I actually wrote masterpiece in in one of my cars, and I finished it up at the studio. And my boy Purple Chrome is one of, the, I'm not gonna say he is the best. That man has taken for 13 and a half years, Seneca Malcolm. His name of his company is Purple Chrome. Okay. Has taken my voice, kept my voice. He didn't have to manipulate my voice. My music. See, you can make beats all day. You can make raps all day. But if your engineer is garbage. Yeah. <laughs> You're in a bad Seneca's situation. the best. <laughs> He's the best. It is what it is. People are like, no, I'm the best. No. Seneca Malcolm is the best. He didn't even need a degree from Berkeley. Mm. He just went to get it to get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so Seneca's the best. He's the greatest, man. He's the greatest. I love him to death. We fight like cats and dogs. <laughs> one thing I love about Seneca, he's not a yes man. So if I'm in the booth, you're like, no. <laughs> you can appreciate that. What? You can appreciate it, yeah. man. I love yeah. him for it, man. My son, too. My son is a, is a real big critic. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, and he and I and he loves hip hop, especially '90s hip hop. Mm. You know, he does, he's not listening to that Keith Keith Young Thug stuff yeah. now. But <laughs> I think it's more so he can, you know. But um, I, I had a great time with him. Wow. You know? Seneca's dope. So, um, just just in terms of this year, how do you want it to look for you? Oh man, this year um, I'm shooting a web series. Okay. Days of a King. And what is this about? Days of a King is basically a, a drug dealer who who is really conflicted with, and it's weird. He's a drug dealer that is only selling drugs because the government won't put money into his community. Wow. So he says, okay. You don't want to put money in community, into my community? I'm going to sell drugs to your community, bring that money into my community, and build my community up. It's like a modern-day Robin Hood. Yeah, <laughs> and some some regular drug dealers think that he's selling in the neighborhood. They're trying to come take over, and a, a young girl gets killed. And when he gets out the game, he comes back into the game to not just avenge this little girl's death, but to work along with... Um, other peace advocates and stuff like that to, to, to handle the drug dealers that moved into the neighborhood. So I got Days of a King. Um, I have Morena West. She's starring in that with me. Janelle, um, I'm sorry, Janae Simpson. She's in that. Um, Janae Simpson, I'm sorry. Janae Simpson, she's in that. Uh, my son and, and a few others. And I got a role for you, man, if you want it. Oh, man, I would really appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> uh, another film I have is Colorblind. 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 I'm what refilming is this that. Colorblind is basically, as Bella Ray would say, everything you talk about the kitchen table that you won't talk at in public. In the public. Mm. So basically, it's about racism in the workplace. How, and it's not just white racism. I'm not just talking about a white superior degrading or being a bigot or whatever to a black um, subordinate. I'm talking about black on black racism too. That's, that's a big How thing. some black people are really racist towards their own people. So true. How Hispanics are racist towards how Puerto Ricans, I'm sorry, not Puerto Ricans, how Boricuas are racist towards Dominicans. Mm -hmm. How Dominicans are racist towards Haitians. I'm showing the racism of all in that spectrum. Then you have um, how black men how black women do not love the fact that a lot of black men are marrying outside of their race. Mm. So, and if you notice, Boricuas are made up of Taino Indians, Spaniards, and African. Yeah, some Arabic as well. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a mixed bunch, so. Dominicans. That's right. And Haitians are brothers and sisters. The French put a man-made river and just separated the two. <laughs> it's insane. You understand what I'm saying? So Colorblind is that movie. I'm refilming it. I got Mocha Marie. I got myself. Andy Troy, he's a great director, too. I'm in his film, one of his films. Um, oh, Dennis Maddox. So that film, a lot of the footage from the previous film, mm -hmm. I put um, different snippets and stuff up. Okay. Yeah. I put Where can up. we check that out at? Colorblind. Oh, YouTube. On YouTube. It's on YouTube. And do you have a website? How uh, can yeah. we get in contact with you? Uh, MikeyJMusic.com. Okay. Is the website. I'm actually reconstructing it for 2016. Okay. So they go to MikeyJMusic.com and they see it's under construction. Uh, yeah, it's under construction. <laughs> but um, fa my Facebook is uh, Team Mikey J or Mikey J. Okay. And um, YouTube is Mikey J TV. IMDb Mikey J. I'm in about 27 or 28 films that's um already have been shot or are coming up for schedule process and you know pre-production or whatever so i got a lot going on very cool man hey i want to say thank you for coming out thanks for having <laughs> me man it was a pleasure meeting you we gotta and get you um, with kevin breslin man <laughs> we got a film coming up called forsaking all this forsaking yeah others. i'm in blowtorch that's starring um alec um alec baldwin not alec baldwin sorry billy baldwin okay. i'm on the sante captain the genie uh victoria got a carter jr she's on gotham very nice and um I'm in that, along with oh Jack uh, Jack Falahi. He's on um, How to Get Away with Murder. So, <laughs> oh man, busy yeah. man. Woo! Yeah, it's your boy. <laughs> Yo. I said, I, 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 yeah.
You know, I gotta love Jones. <laughs> Yo, man, I'm a sweet lemonade girl, sweet potato pie Sweet like a sugar candy apple in my eye Let me take the sugary spot between your thighs Now tell me, would you like that? All right, all right, all right huh. You be my genie in the lamp But I won't rub you three times I'll lick you like a stamp But on the real girl, we can chill and wait for that Get our frequent mileage on, leave the safe for that Maybe hit a beach, maybe Costa Rica What I'm gonna do with your girl, use a keeper Pretty brown eyes, baby When'd you get them peepers? Any dude acting up with you, I put him in a sleeper. All I see is the best for you to find the things in life. The house with a picket fence, but Scott, I want some ice. A coupe in the garage, sedan in the driveway. Pop the top in the summer, cruise along the highway. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, life is too short. So I gotta let you know how I'm feeling. And it's your boy Mikey J, Mikey Jones. And I gotta love Jones for you, girl. And I know you got one for me, too. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I gotta love Jones, love Jones. I gotta love Jones, love Jones. I gotta love Jones, love Jones. Yeah. Ah, I gotta love Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was awesome, man. Yeah, that's my song, <laughs> Love Jones, man. Um, I did that a few years ago. That's um, uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Gully, Sherelle Gully. Um, she's out of Connecticut. Is she a rapper? No, she's actually um, a, 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 a hairdresser, hair designer. And her name is Miss Gully. Yeah, <laughs> Sherelle, Gully, uh, Sherelle Gully. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, she did me a big favor doing that video. And um, that's that. that is one of my favorites. That's my brother in the background. Ah, okay. Doing, or singing in the background, Love Jones. Call him Kurt, and um, that was a good song. I love that song. Woo! Yeah, it's your boy. <laughs> Yo, you know, I gotta love Jones. <laughs> And I'm gonna let you know what it is. <laughs> 